Okay, we've been talking a lot about literacy ministry and reading and writing, and this is really where we're going to get into the actual practice of how do we teach reading, what are the steps involved. But before we jump into that, just want to uh, take a second to give you an overview of the lesson schedule. First, we're going to start with opening prayer and review of the previous lesson. Then we'll have reading. After that, we'll have writing. After that, we'll have a section for witness and discipleship. And after that, we'll have a section for review and games and then a closing prayer. And we'll talk about all those things in greater detail later on. But for now, we really want to focus in on reading. How do we teach reading? Well, to start, we have to understand what reading is and what reading isn't. So I have two diagrams here that I'd like to take a look at. And our question right now is, what is reading? Now, in this first diagram, you'll see that the words on the page here are going into the student's eyes, and from there, they're going up into his brain. He's processing them. His eyes are a filter, sending the message to the brain. And then from there, it's coming down from his brain to his mouth, and he speaks the word. So in other words, when we say, what is this word, and the student reads it with his eyes, it goes into his brain, and then he speaks it with his mouth. He says, what? He's reading. So this is reading. Now down here, we have the same student who, he's got the book in front of him, and so technically he's looking at it, he's seeing it, but he's hearing the words that the teacher is saying, and they're going into his ear first, and then from his ear straight away to his mouth. Uh, doesn't pass through his eyes or his brain in any significant way. Uh, he hears it, he repeats it straight away, and we call this parrot reading. We call it parrot reading, but in actuality, it's not reading at all. It's parroting. It's hearing something that the teacher is saying and just repeating. And you'll find in a, in a large classroom setting especially that the students may give the illusion that they're actually learning how to read because you say, what is this? And they all respond seemingly in unison. But in actuality, there are many students who are just hearing the word and repeating it straight away. So they're not actually processing. So as you go through your class, be sure to, to take time to really look at students and listen to them, see how they're reading, ask them comprehension questions, ask them to read silently. All those things will help you to ensure that the student is indeed reading as opposed to parrot reading. So before we, we move ahead into the five steps and how to teach them, let's just simply review why the LEI method is so simple to use and what distinguishes LEI primers from other literacy primers that are out there. Well, number one, it's simple for the volunteer teacher. As we mentioned earlier, the reading section is taught using a simple method called the five steps. Once these teachers memorize these short steps, they can easily teach any lesson in the primer. So if you learn how to teach lesson one, you can teach lesson eight, nine, 12, 21, 32. You can teach any lesson. Number two, it's simple for the learner. In the very first lesson, the student is learning how to read actual phrases and simple sentences. This method is easier and more effective and gives the student much more confidence than other methods where students would traditionally be learning the alphabet or simply memorizing things like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or memorizing the vowels or the consonants to start out. Number three, it's simple for the learner to become a teacher. Now, the LEI motto is each one teach one and win one to Christ. And what we mean by that, each one teach one, is that one of the goals in literacy ministry is that once students learn how to read, that they themselves will begin to teach someone else how to read. And this is a beautiful model that Christ teaches us. What we receive, we pass on to some, someone else. And this is made possible because the students have repeatedly observed the consistent teaching method in the five steps. For 72 lessons, they've been hearing the same five steps done the same way each time. And that really gives the students confidence to be able to teach themselves. So the five steps are the heart and the soul of the LEI teaching method. If you have a primer there in front of you, then turn to what we call the five steps condensed in book one. The five steps condensed is always found just before lesson one in the primer. So if you find lesson one, then just turn back a few pages and you'll find the five steps condensed. There are names of the five steps 
written at the beginning of the five steps condense, and this is what we use for teaching reading. So let's memorize the five steps. Step one, teach the picture words. Step two, find the picture words. Step three, teach the words in the boxes. Step four, use the word cards. Step five, read the story. Again, these steps form the core of the LEI teaching method, so you must memorize the five steps in a way where your teaching is going to be smooth, consistent, and effective. Teachers who teach the steps in their own kind of way or in all different kinds of ways can often confuse the students even more than they already are. Remember, students bring with them the, the fears of embarrassment, fears of failure, and any inconsistencies in the teaching method can only serve to discourage them more. So consistently using the same words to teach, give predictability to a lesson, and give the students confidence that you're not going to be changing things, that you're not going to be mixing it up on them. So we also want students to be able to teach another non-reader after they finish the primer. So if they've heard the same thing each time, they'll be much more likely to be inspired to go teach someone else. So let's review the five steps one more time. Step one, teach the picture words. Step two, find the picture words. Step three, teach the words in the boxes. Step four, use the word cards. And step five, read the story. So take some time now to practice amongst yourselves uh, if you have to take out a sheet of paper and try to write down the five steps without looking or without using um, the online resources as a guide or without looking into your primer, just try to take a piece of paper and read the five steps right now. Now if you can write them down without messing up, without looking at the five steps condensed, then you will have effectively memorized all five steps. Once you do that, then we're going to continue with a video with some actual live demonstration from a teacher training workshop at our International Literacy Training Institute that will show you how we actually use these five steps in real life and in a teacher training workshop.